chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He made man in his own image. And it was very good. But Adam and Eve ate a bad apple, and then sin and death came into the world. Chapter 2. One starry night, the Lord tells Abram, Your offspring will be numerous as these. Abraham is dubbed the father of a great nation, Israel. Chapter 3. Joseph is dumped in a well and sold into slavery by his brothers. He does not seek revenge, but offers forgiveness. Joseph tells them, you meant this to harm me, but God intended it for good. Chapter 4. God sends Moses to free the Israelites from Pharaoh's grip. Let my people go. Pharaoh succumbs to God's mighty power. Moses leads God's chosen out of Egypt. Chapter 5. God carves Ten Commandments in stone. God's law is a doctor's prescription, not a job description. Chapter 6. The Israelites grumble and complain while roaming in the wilderness. God's miracles and provision along the way? Forgotten. Another problem? Pin the blame on God. <laughs> Chapter 7. The Lord leads Joshua and the Israelites into the Promised Land against their enemies. Charge! Victory is theirs! The walls of Jericho come tumbling down. Chapter 8 Deborah, Gideon, Samson, three famous judges of Israel. But the Lord delivered Israel from the consequences of doing what they thought was right in their own eyes. Chapter 9. Two other women of great faith are Ruth and Naomi. Both struggle to survive, but both are recognized for putting their hope in the Lord. Chapter 10. The Israelites demand a king to rule them. Samuel scoffs. How foolish. Really? Will you reject the Lord, the true king of kings? You'll be sorry. Saul becomes king. He sins. He is ineffective. Chapter 11. It's David versus Goliath, the giant. Others power in fear. Not David. One shot to the forehead, and down goes Goliath. David, once a shepherd boy, now the king of Israel. Chapter 12. David sleeps with Bathsheba, kills her husband too. But the response to his sins against God, humility, repentance, prayer for the Lord's mercy. Truly, David's a man after God's own heart. Chapter 13. Solomon succeeds David as king. He prays, Lord, Please give me wisdom and discernment to rule these people. Great wealth and peace are added during his reign. Chapter 14. The kingdom of Israel is soon torn in two. Israel to the north, Judah in the south. Kings Jeroboam and Rehoboam both lead God's people astray in pagan worship. Chapter 15. God spoke through the prophets to his people. Elijah and Elisha were two of God's mighty messengers proclaiming, Hear ye, hear ye, worship no other idols or gods, but worship only the Lord God Almighty. Chapter 16. Isaiah also sounded the warning alarm. Remain obedient to the Lord and enjoy God's mercy and compassion, or turn away and face exile and oppression. Chapter 17. 
the Israelites continued to worship other gods, evil in the eyes of the Lord. Jeremiah foretold their fall to King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. Chapter 18. While in exile, some refused to bow down to pagan worship. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, rescued from the fiery furnace from the Lord by the Lord. David was saved from the mouths of lions. Chapter 19. God comes to the rescue once again. Frees them from Babylonian exile. Ah, Jerusalem, home sweet home. They shall let you go to God's holy temple. Chapter 20. Esther risks her life to, ex to expose Haman's plot to kill the Jews. God's hand was clearly, clearly evident only for such a time as this. Chapter 21. Walls up. Nehemiah rebuilds the city walls. Malachi, the last of the Old Testament prophets, reminds the people of God's never-ending covenant promise to be their God and them, his people. Chapter 22. Good, good news of great joy for all people. Today, a Savior has been born. His name is Jesus. Chapter 23. Jesus calls on 12 disciples and begins teaching the people and performing many signs and wonders among them. Chapter 24, Jesus tells parables, stories about everyday life to teach about life in his kingdom. Jesus performs miracles, acts of divine healing and provision as signs that he is God's one and only son. Chapter 25, many Jews believe Jesus is the Messiah, but the Pharisees do not. Jesus is a threat to their role as religious leaders. Feudal strategy, kill the one who declares, I am the way and the resurrection and the life. Chapter 26, Jesus breaks bread and shares a cup with his disciples at Passover. Judas betrays Jesus. A crown of thorns is placed on Jesus' head. He dies on the cross, taking humanity's punishment for sin on himself. Chapter 27, an empty tomb, Christ is risen, just as he said he would. He appears to the disciples and others before ascending into heaven. Chapter 28, in the last days I will pour out my spirit on the people, said the Lord, and on Pentecost he did. A rushing wind, tongues of fire, speaking in tongues, the Lord's Holy Spirit, Apostles empowered, Christ witnesses in Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. Chapter 29, knocked from his horse, Saul gets a name change to Paul and becomes the Lord's ambassador. He declares to Jews and Gentiles alike, all are one in Christ. The gospel spreads like wildfire. Churches sprout up. Paul spreads the word in letters to churches. Grow in faith. Chapter 30. Persecution and prison often follow Paul on his mission journeys. <clears throat> Ashamed of the gospel? Never. A faithful witness in life and in death. Chapter 31. John's vision of the end times in Revelation. When Christ returns, there will be a new creation, a new earth. All will rise, then judgment. For those that believe in him, heaven awaits. So too, one glorious final promise. The Lord will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or crying, or pain. This is God's story. This is our story. Amen. Every 
chapter of the story just rings in my heart as we rehearse them from one end to the other, and it is so exciting. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray and give God thanks for all he's done.